Good afternoon. Let me share a few verses with you from Matthew chapter 11. I'm sorry. Yes, chapter 11. Uh, starting with verse 28. Now, clearly these are well-known verses. Uh, perhaps we've all memorized them. But I'd like to share two thoughts with you that I think are significant that come from these verses that have a very practical application for us. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Very well-known verses. But they're filled with deep meaning. First of all, there's an invitation to come unto me, Christ said. I believe there's a command in that. The command is, come to me. You can't make life work without me. I'm your all-sufficient one. Without me, you can do nothing, he said. So come to me. <clears throat> and what does he offer? Oh, this is the amazing thing. A yoke. And the picture, of course, is the, the yoke, the collar, the working collar that would be put on two oxen that would have pulled a cart or a plow or whatever. Two strong beasts. Both of them have their heads in the yoke. That yoke was constraining. Those oxen couldn't go where they wanted. They had to go where the yoke and the one who was driving them using the yoke would take them. So what is the picture for us? Could it be that Christ is saying, look, I've got my head in one side of that yoke. I'm on my hands and knees, if you will. I've taken a place of humility, of meekness, and I've stuck my head in this yoke. <clears throat> And I'm looking over to the right here. The other side of the yoke is empty, and I'm inviting. No, I, actually, I'm commanding you to stick your head in the yoke. But that means that you have to get on your hands and knees with me. There's a humble act of taking the yoke. So what precisely is Jesus saying about himself? Well, what yoke did he ever take on himself? Well, it's symbolic, so he never put an ox yoke on himself, of course. <clears throat> but I think it's summed up in just one idea when he said concerning the cup, take this cup from me. Uh, I don't really want to go to the cross, is what he was saying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I think that yoke is pictorially showing us what went on in his heart uh, as he approached the cross. No, he didn't want to go to the cross. That was going to be a painful, very painful experience for him. But he had come to do the will of the Father. And the will of the Father was that he would have no will of his own. That yoke is Christ saying, hey, I never had a will of my own. I never did what I wanted to do. I came to fulfill the will of my Father, which was to minister in perfection with a life of pure holiness and a death that was perfect because I was a lamb without blemish to secure the salvation of people for God. When he put his head in that yoke, so to speak, it was a picture of him saying, I surrender my will to you, Lord. And it's a beautiful picture of absolute surrender. So he's inviting us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and to stick our neck into the yoke. And if we do, what does that signify? Well, it signifies, number one, that we have no will of our own. We are willing to surrender unconditionally to the will of the Savior. And in that, we get the blessing. All heavenly blessings come down to us. But it only comes through humility. And it only comes when we team up with Christ. So where are you today? What kind of things are you carrying about that are weighing you down? The only respite, peace and rest we find for our soul is to come alongside Christ. Take the same position he has. He gives us the grace to do it. Put our head in the yoke and move with him through life. He's right there to sustain us. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Thank you.